a little bit like a fishing expedition rather than like a solid fucking piece of journalism. I'm I'm going to be honest. Um, here are the top level uh, things that we need to discuss. A flight attendant for SpaceX said Elon Musk asked her to do more during a massage. A billionaire founder exposed his penis to her and offered to buy her a horse, according to claims in a declaration. She was a horseback rider. Uh, after she reported the incident to SpaceX, Musk's company paid her $250,000 as a part of the severance agreement. Now, this, uh, the aerospace uh, firm SpaceX, uh, which is heavily subsidized by the American government in, in that classic private-public partnership that we love to do, was founded by Elon Musk, the world's wealthiest man, and they paid $250,000 to settle, settle a sexual misconduct claim against Musk in 2018. Insider has learned. Okay. Now, um, never trade a horse for a handjob. Red did to NPC probably. So it's a real, it's a little confusing. Um, this, this, uh, situation is a little confusing because like, uh, it, it feels like, I mean, this is something that I, I just suspect billionaires do all the time, right? I mean, this is like their thing. The billionaires love getting fucking hand jobs from flight attendants and, and people that they put on their private jets. It's like kind of what they're, they're known for. That's like their thing, right? Um, obviously, uh, consent is key in that situation. So you have to remember that. No, this is... The severance came in 2018, but the uh, misconduct happened in, uh, the incident happened in 2016, for those of you who don't know. Um, the attendant worked as a member of the cabin crew on a contract basis for SpaceX's corporate jet fleet. She accused Musk of exposing his erect penis to her, rubbing her leg without consent, and offering to buy her a horse in exchange for an erotic massage, according to interviews and documents obtained by Insider. Okay? Um... The incident, which took place in 2016, is an alleged declaration signed by a friend of the attendant and prepared in support of her claim. The details in the story are drawn from the declaration as well as other documents, including email correspondence and other records shared with Insider by the friend. Now, this is why I said this is not a very article. Because for the rest of this investigative piece, you do not hear from the primary party. You do not hear from the primary party's lawyer. The only you do not hear from the company. You only hear from Elon Musk one time, and then he refuses to elaborate further and just basically says like I'm not. He, he tries to do his own PR, which like is a confirmation uh, to a certain degree, but there is not really a lot of evidence otherwise. And there should be a paper trail for this if it's a two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar, if it's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar severance. There should be a paper trail for it. Like that's something that is you know documented. And uh, for that reason, I, you should probably, I don't know, try to get further, like you should do a little bit more uh, investigative reporting rather than have a friend, considering this is the wealthiest, most powerful human being on the fucking planet, and you're accusing them of sexual misconduct, secondhand, um, uh, secondhand uh, uh, information, not even from the primary party, is, you know... It's, it's not great. According to the declaration, the attendant confided to the friend that after taking the flight attendant job, she was encouraged to get licensed as a masseuse so that she could give Musk massages. It was during one such massage in a private cabin on Musk's Gulfstream, uh, she told the friend that Musk propositioned her. After Insider contacted Musk for a comment, he emailed to ask for uh, more time to respond and said there is a lot more to this story. Okay, so that's really weird. Like, first of all, why the fuck is Elon Musk responding to comments from news media? What is wrong with him, dude? He literally thinks he is a god. I swear to God. Why would you think you can do your own PR in this situation? Why would you do that? Also, I know the victim actually signed an NDA in a non-disparagement agreement, which is usually very commonplace. Uh, however, in instances of sexual assault in the state of California, non-disclosure uh, non agreements and non-disparagement uh, agreements do not actually mean anything. They were thrown out. It's meaningless in the state of California. Jerry Brown uh, pushed for a law to say, like, if you are actually assaulted, if you were sexually assaulted, the, the NDA cover-up does not stand. So there's that. Um, but, but even in spite of all that, she has not come out. Okay. 
It also came out that he met the attendant at a bar she was working at in LA, scored her a SpaceX attendance job, and then propositioned to pay for her train to become a private masseuse. Yeah. Um, it was not secondhand information. She was the key witness in the settlement. Um, sexual assault is kind of more important than some bullshit piece of paper. I know. I, I, I am saying that. Um, does she get to keep to 250000 though? I mean, I hope. Yeah. Reminds me often cited phrase from Epstein. The more you do, the more you make when referring to flight attendants needing to know how to massage. Oh, yeah. Literally. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. Um. Okay, so, so th those contracts are bullshit. Like that, the, the non disparagement is uh, situational. I think you can abide by it um, if you want, but you don't really, you don't really need to. I don't think you'll get like fucking punished too severely for uh, not abiding by it. I guess like unless you know, unless the company decides to sue you. Um, but the the non disclosure is legally speaking, at the very least, uh, in, insignificant in the circumstance, given that it's a sexual assault, and uh, in the state of California, non disclosure agreements in the uh, in the situation of a sexual assault are are no longer like they're they're inadmissible. Like you can violate them, and the NDA was signed prior to the law change. Yes, because the law change came in 2018, but it doesn't matter. Actually, I don't know. They settled in 2018, so it literally might have happened during that. But it, it still doesn't matter. It's non-binding. Who cares? Um, the only binding contract is my top of the hour ad breaks that I'm going to unfortunately place right here before we move further into the additional details of the story. I'm going to run a 60-second ad break here. Sorry. Chat has to happen. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do that for $5. You can do that for free with a Twitch Prime. Um, benefits uh, there. Twitch Prime is free as long as you have an Amazon Prime account connected to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. Here's the one minute break now. So the NDA in a situation like this is more of a piece of evidence than an actual NDA. Uh, pretty much. It like turns into basically further evidence, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if it's admissible in court or not. Don't forget, Elon said he will never contest true claims and will never settle false claims. Okay. So... Um, according to the declaration the attendant confided to her friend uh, after insider contact that must for a comment he emailed to ask one more time to respond and said there's a lot more to the story if I were inclined to engage in sexual harassment this is unlikely to be the first time in my entire 30 year career that it comes to light he wrote calling the story a politically motivated hit piece now the thing is this is true there is a pattern of behavior uh, what do I always say when, uh, when assessing the the uh, me too claims that come out one of the things that you look for is a repeated pattern of behavior now it's easy to fucking parse through and put together a pattern of behavior because like most men are trash uh, everyone has done like trashy fucking shit that you could technically say shows their character right but usually there's a there's an obvious pattern of behavior of like sexual misconduct that you can piece together okay um, no, I don't think uh, hanging out with uh, just Lane Maxwell is is enough evidence for the record like I, I am inclined to believe that he was photobombed. I am, however, also inclined to believe that as a billionaire, he probably did try to uh, uh, get sexual massages from flight attendants. It's just billionaire shit. Um, if anything, Kimball is way more sussy with sexual misconduct given his direct uh, connection to Jeffrey Epstein himself. Kimball Musk, Elon Musk's brother, for the record. Um, Don't be for Christ has like the best fucking the best shit. In 2011, Elon Musk attended an annual billionaire's dinner hosted by Edge, an organization founded almost entirely by Epstein. Uh, also attending the dinner was Epstein himself. The dinner was held in 1 3 2011 in New York. Epstein had just been released from house arrest in Florida months earlier and was at this time fighting a New York court's ruling that he must register as the highest and most dangerous level of sex offender, which he lost. At the Epstein-funded soiree, Musk was seated next to billionaire defense contractor Jeff Bezos. This, despite their much ballyhooed rivalry. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if they were fucking rivals back then. You know what I mean? Um, Elon Musk said he's intentionally trying to provoke Jeff Bezos with Blue Origin makes more progress. It's the latest in a 15-year feud. 
I wonder why billionaires can completely let go of their petty rivalries. It's called class solidarity, chat. That's what it is, okay? That's precisely what it is. There is, there is nothing more powerful than class solidarity amongst billionaires, something that the working class will never be able to achieve, okay? They can have petty, sportsman-like rivalries, but ultimately, uh, when it comes to the grand scheme of things, when it comes to the larger picture of like uh, deregulation, tax cuts, and totally gaming the system to their benefit, milking the government for all of the subsidies for their own personal projects... You know, there's always there's always going to be solidarity there. Among the luminaries attending the 2011 dinner was Elon's then wife, Tallulah Riley, who was once rumored to have a child bride procured for Elon by Ghislaine Maxwell. Riley denies this, claiming, to my knowledge, I've never met Ghislaine Maxwell. Okay, that seems a little crazy. Elon and I met when I was 22 and he was on a business trip to London. I, it was a chance meeting engineered by no one. Child bride rumors are unsubstantiated. Yeah, okay, that's ridiculous. However, sources told Insider that Epstein procured a woman for Elon's brother. This is real. The child bride shit is, is no, I, I don't believe that, but I do believe this. I know this. This is, remember how I told you? There you go. Jeffrey Epstein said Elon Musk's brother up with a girlfriend. This is true. This is actually true. Kimball dated the woman from 2011 to 2012. Uh, additionally, it's highly unlikely Riley never met Ghislaine, given Riley's attended pre pre the uh, infamous 2014 Vanity Fair Oscars party where Elon was photographed with Ghislaine. It is possible I was briefly introduced to her, but not in any way that I can remember. There she is. There he is. He claims that this is... Uh, he claims that uh, this is... Um, you know, a, a, a photo bombing. Elon Musk claims that this photo is a photo bombing. Riley also notes that she and Elon visited Epstein's uh, at his Manhattan mansion. According to Elon, this meeting lasted about 30 minutes and was held at Riley's urging as research for a novel she was writing. Um, I do believe this. Several years ago, I was at his house in Manhattan for about 30 minutes in the middle of an afternoon with Tallulah Riley as she was curious about meeting the strange person for a novel she was writing. He did not see anything inappropriate at all apart from weird art. He tried repeatedly to get me to visit his island. I declined. A Musk spokesperson also emailed. Elon never introduced Jeffrey Epstein to Mark Zuckerberg and does not know either person well enough to do so. They simply happen to be guests at the neuroscience dinner organized by Reed Hoffman. Um, TM Threm, thank you for the five get the subs. Elon dined with Epstein at least one other time at a dinner hosted by PayPal Mafia crony Reed Hoffman to put on a celebrate put on to celebrate neuroscientists. Here, Elon reportedly introduced Epstein to Mark Zuckerberg, though Elon, of course, denies this. Um, Insider also reported that Epstein toured Elon's SpaceX facility in 2012. Elon denies it, but SpaceX did play host to Edge's 20, 2008 masterclass on synthetic genomics, led by CRISPR inventor and Epstein phone pal George Church. Uh, if you remember, uh, you know, Jeffrey Epstein was like seen as a, is like a kingmaker kind of, and that he was fascinated with uh, transhumanism and, uh, he like, that's why edge is relevant in the situation. Correction. It was 2009, not 2008. Elon also attended an edge masterclass in 2008. The one on behavioral economics. Once again, he was seated next to his rival Jeff Bezos. So awkward. Trigger warning, link contains photo of Daniel Kahneman's disgusting bare feet. What the fuck? In 2008, Epstein told New York Times columnist James B. Stewart that he was advising Elon Musk on Tesla, possibly by complying, compiling a list of candidates for a new chairman and speaking to the Saudis about investing in the company. Musk denies this. Um, this could be... So Jeffrey Epstein is not uh, a, a very credible person in this situation, Partially because he loves trafficking in influence. And, uh, you know, this could potentially be one of those instances where he was, like, exaggerating as a con man his level of involvement with a, with a you know, gigantic tech company in the space. So I'm inclined to believe that, uh, I mean, th this, is, this is sussy at best, okay? The connections between uh, him and Elon Musk are, are, I think, limited, okay? All my friends, this, this is fake news. What? Uh, asking oil oligarchs to invest in electric cars? Well, yeah, no. The, I mean, it tracks, for the record. This does technically track with Saudi Arabia's interest, the kingdom's interest in diversifying their portfolio and trying to shift their attention or trying to shift their, uh, their, their 
uh, economy away from being over reliant on uh, simply fossil fuels. But around this time, they basically um, around this time they basically started uh, you know focusing on uh, focusing on financial uh, instruments as a way to generate like London style as a way to generate uh, you know more sustainable and, and more diverse forms of income. So they they have a lot of cash. They wanted to dump it into the into the stock market. They wanted to basically start purchasing things. So this does track with that. Uh, something fossil fuel giants routinely uh, routinely will purchase uh, electric vehicle and like uh, renewable energy assets, um, partially to halt the level of research that is happening, so that they extend our over reliance on fossil fuel, and partially because they're hedging their bets against the future. This is pretty commonplace. So. It's not, it's not surprising that Saudi Arabia would be interested in uh, 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 purchasing a piece of Tesla. I, I, that's not surprising to me at all. That, that does track. Was Jeffrey Epstein the one facilitating that? Maybe. Um, but I don't know. Okay? What do you mean hedging their bets against the future? Like, fossil fuel is a finite resource. And... Uh, and, and Saudi Arabia recognizes that their over-reliance on oil might hurt them in the long run, which is why they wanted to put their revenue, they wanted to dump their revenue into financial instruments and basically, uh, turn it into like a, instead of a resource-based economy, uh, turn it, turn one into, uh, you know, they, they wanted to become like a big fucking hedge fund basically. Okay. I wasn't sure if you meant that they don't believe in electric. No, I th no. The reason why a lot of oil, gas, uh, fossil fuel industry giants will purchase fucking electric vehicle companies or will purchase, um, will will basically uh, dump funds into, uh, into. Do you know what a hedge fund is? What did I say wrong about Saudi Arabia trying to operate as like one big hedge fund? What, what it, what, how does, how is that not applicable in this situation? Cigarette companies did this with vapes too. Yeah. Um, they understand the limitations of, of being a sink, like being over reliant on a singular resource, especially one that's finite, especially one that's like killing the planet. Um, so, uh, part of the reason why a lot of fossil fuel industry, uh, giants will purchase or will buy into renewable energy initiatives is to maintain their dominance over the energy sector. Okay. But also, cause like in the future, when the energy sector is, is shifting away to, uh, to, to renewable energy, for example, then they will be there. They will continue to have ownership over energy production. Um, but for the time being, or at least for the past like 10 years, the reason why Exxon Mobil, Shell, British Petroleum, uh, uh, you know, all of these uh, Saudi oil, like uh, all of these uh, companies have been buying fucking uh, shares of, of renewable energy companies specifically is to make sure that they can push back as far as they can the complete shifting away from fossil fuel, the complete reliance uh, shifting away from fossil fuel to renewable energies. Okay, that's the point. They also do it because they want to traffic influence. Uh, so they'll buy like, you know, Formula One or they'll buy a piece of Formula One. Basically, that's uh, part of what they're doing is to, uh, to, to purchase good nature, goodwill. Um, they also greenwash. Yes, exactly. Greenwashing is the, the proper term for this. By the way, for people who don't know, hedge funds are financial partnerships that use pooled funds and employ different strategies to earn active returns for their investors. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about the Buffalo shooter and his background in a little bit. Uh, in 2016, uh, per an unconfirmed email screenshot, Epstein perfectly emailed Elon asking him if he met, a, met with Ghislaine at the Kung Fu practice. The Musk responds, I did. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. 
Uh, Aaron Greenspan refers to this email in his lawsuit against Musk slash Tesla as evidence of Musk ties to known felons and further notes that Musk is a judo aficionado. Snopes ham-handedly tried to debunk the email but later changed the rating to unproven. Um, like, I don't need... Uh, I don't need Elon Musk to like directly fucking suck Jeffrey Epstein's dick to think that, um, us man. <laughs>